Hello, hi everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, and welcome to We Are The Overcomers. And I, I know this is kind of a late notice, but I really need to get a message out that I believe that I have gotten from the Lord and, uh, and it is concerning, strangely enough, the harvest uh, and rapture events that will be coming. So uh, if you get this uh, notification and you want to come in, I do hope that you will. And uh, But there's some very interesting things that the Lord has showed me in his word that I, I, I think it, it's really strange because I can't tell you how many times that I have read these passages. Uh, however, here in this instance, I have seen something. Hello, come in, everyone. I have seen something that just with Holy Spirit, just wisdom, because I've been praying for wisdom. This is what happened to me today. And hence the reason for the message being called, which one of the days of the Son of Man will you see? And that's really the topic of our message today. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me get a drink of water. Ah, it is, I've been so busy, I'm so busy, but I'm never too busy to give the message of the Lord. And so before we start, let's get in with a quick prayer and asking Holy Spirit to cover our hearts and our minds with your precious cleansing blood, Lord Jesus. We look to you. We want to see you. We are lifting up our hands. We're lifting up our heads. We see the things going on around us as it begins to come to pass. And we know that you are at the door and you are about to call us up. I am praying that you are going to touch the hearts of everyone listening to this today, that you are going to open up their eyes to receive the word, the message, the understanding that you have uh, just given out there because all understanding comes from you. Wisdom comes from you and you alone. And I thank you for it. Bring all of those that you would have here this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Why? Because the time is incredibly short. <clears throat> all right. This is what I want to start with, okay? Now, the very first thing that I want to hit is how we number these days. I'm going to make this very close, very short, uh, there's, there's been some messages out there, uh, and, and I just want to highlight this again. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of things for you to take snapshots of, and I'm hoping that you will. Okay. We'll start with this one here. Okay. All right. And so this is what this is. I want to just go ahead and make a quick statement about how. The sliver of the moon is not what we want to use in order to calculate days and years, seasons, moeds, feast days, or anything like that. I had done a message, as I'd mentioned before, in a community post that I did previously that talked about how I had done a message approximately a year ago or so. And in that message, I discussed all of the history and everything, how the Jews came to have uh, the particular methodology that they used to calculate calendar days. And the thing about it is, I was uh, using this and being able to show how They've done this for millennia, right? It's uh, thousands of years, at least uh, at least 2,000 that we're looking at. Uh, oh, okay, Sean, 
Rich Burger. Okay, Wayne, when is this going to happen? We are at the door, Sean. I, I'm telling you, please just, I, I think that there's one thing that's very serious and I and and you'll see when we get into it just exactly what I'm talking about. I really believe that we get a seven day warning uh, for the bride. I uh, believe that it happens exactly on the same day for the mid tribulation harvest. And I believe that they are going to be completely caught unawares at the post tribulation harvest, just like the thief that comes in the night. <clears throat> We're going to cover that in deep detail. I'm going to show you this. And uh, and uh, I, I just really want to highlight this first because it's going to dovetail into what we're talking about. Now, in this message, as far as the moon being able to be used, I'm thinking like, well, gosh, guys, you've been using this for a couple of thousand years. You probably know what you're doing, right? Uh, not so. And, and, and I know better than that. Just because something's been done for a long time, just because something is traditional, brothers and sisters, does not mean that it is accurate or true. And I, I, what I want is for every, for Jesus to be true and every man a liar. That's what it's all about. Jesus is the only way, truth, and life. I'm in. Okay. So here's the reason why I'm pointing this out is because. Out of Jubilees, chapter 6, verses 34 and 35, we have a statement. Now, is Jubilees scripture? No, it is not scripture. However, it is, let's see if I can get there. I'm trying to keep the lighting good enough for you to be able to see me. So it's, uh, I've got precarious lights placed around so you can get it in front of my face because I still don't have that thing covering up the back. So if you'll forgive me with that, I appreciate it. All right. And there will be those who will make observations of the moon. For this one, the moon, corrupts the stated times and comes out earlier each year by 10 days. And in this way, they will corrupt the years and will observe a wrong day as the day of testimony and a corrupted festival day. And everyone will mix holy days with unclean ones and unclean with holy, for they will err as to months and Sabbaths and festivals and jubilees. Again, that's Jubilees chapter 6, verses 34 and 35. Now, the whole point of this is, is just to be able to take something, to be able to show you historically what... Uh, what I believe we now uh, know to be true anyway, right? Um, uh, our brother, uh, Mike there, Repo Man 64. Love you, brother. If you hear this, this is a shout out to you. And if you haven't uh, signed on to uh, Brother Mike's channel, Repo Man 64, I do encourage you to do that. He's doing so well. I love his timeline. That's his wheelhouse. He does such an incredible job on there, and I encourage you to check that out because from that, we are going to find that how do we actually number the days? We use a solar calendar. That seems really kind of strange. Why would we use a solar calendar if the solar sun represents the sun? You think? Maybe? All right. And uh, so there, there you go. That's just one of the things I want to put out there, okay? Uh, and here, here is the thing. So I want you to check that out. So what are we looking at probably for the first day of the year? We're looking at, and I'm still trying to just woo, 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 trying to get in there. So forgive me. Uh, I want you to check that out because it's going to help you, I think, to understand just how close we are and what we want to be able to look at. Now, the interesting things are well if they are off you know what what would happen what i mean how how would the jews know uh well they they will find out soon enough there's there's many many things that we could talk about at that just for this message excuse me 
for this message alone, uh, just go ahead and take that, set it aside, and let's move forward, okay? So uh, what we want to talk about today, and that's what we're focusing on, especially in these last, 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 last moments, is the harvest, the rapture of the bride of Christ. And this is one of the things that I, I know there's so much pushback, and my goodness, brothers and sisters, I, I'm getting a lot of it. Uh, you would not believe the type of pushback that I'm getting. And, and it just amazes me. Just, they can't even see. Look, one of the things that we do as lawyers is you have to be able to look at both sides. You don't just get to put forth one view and say, well, there you go, done, that's it, this is right. Well, it may be right, but you have to look at the other side and consider it. That's what a judge does, right? And so we have to put that out for the judge. And so we would say the reason why we think that this position is correct is because we've considered these other things that are being said by the opposition, and the reason why we feel that those are inaccurate are, you know, fill in the blank, right? You see, it's that type of thing that we do. In order for us to be able to see things out in the Bible, you can't have a mindset that says, I'm only going to read this part. This is only for me. I'm, I fit right here. I'm not going to read anything else. You know, all that. No, 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 no. Oh my goodness, you're going to discount all of this other word of God as if it doesn't have any meaning? Are you kidding me? There is not a random word in God's holy scripture, okay? Do you understand? There is not a single random word. It is all there for our admonition, for our building up, for our instruction and righteousness, right? Uh, dear Sister Sue, all right, okay, I'm glad to see you. We're going to be talking about uh, the days of Noah, the days of Lot, and I'm going to give you a little tickler here that each one of those is a separate harvest, and I'm going to show you that right now, okay? And so I'm hoping that everyone else come here with an open mind let me show you what the word says. Consider what the word says, okay? And if considering and with prayer, something doesn't, you know, the Lord is leading you in a different direction or wants you to look at something else, that's fine. We are all different body parts, right? I, I, and, and, and so, but, all parts are necessary for the body to be complete. That's what I would say about this. Now, I would like to think that I'm a, I'm a part of that rib. You know, that's what I have been shown this, this whole time throughout my life. And, and this is what I'm holding to. What is so important to me is to do what I can. I'm going to press forward for that high calling of uh, God in Christ Jesus. That's what I'm going to do, and I'm not giving up. I'm going to grab that brass ring with every bit of strength that I have in my hand, and no one is going to be able to take it from me, and I pray that you feel the same way too. Amen? All right, so let me show you the next slide, and I'm, I'm, I did some uh, markings on it so you can kind of have an idea of what we're going to follow up with. All right. This is kind of a little synopsis. So please take a snapshot of this one. Okay. All right. Now let's discuss it. A few things. Now, what we're going to be looking at in this particular uh, version, eventually we're going to look at the entire uh, chapter of Luke 17, because the whole thing is at so many different layers, and all of these layers come down to this. 
Okay. Now I wanted the first thing that popped out as you look at Luke 17 verses 26 through 30. What did I see? 726 Harpazo. That's the rapture, folks. And what's interesting is that verse 26 is our pre tribulation harvest of the bride. Hold on. What does verse 26 say? And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. Now, there's a lot that there we are going to unpack here, but I want you to understand some uh, what we're going to look at here. A lot of times it's so easy for us to just gloss right over in a scripture and and we just go, yeah, yeah, I know that that's there. I, I, I read it and we associate it with other things to which it should not be associated. For example, the days of the son of man. Hmm. What is that exactly? Does that mean the second coming? Mm, I would like to say no. And I'm going to show you some other things. If it's the coming of the Son of Man, then it's going to say it's the coming of the Son of Man. But I'm going to show you that there is a difference between the days of the Son of Man, the revealing of the Son of Man, and the coming of the Son of Man. And we're going to see this, and it's going to show us how we have multiple harvests and the different groups and how they work together. All right. First, I want to read uh, Luke 7, uh, 17, verses 26 through 30, as we've gotten here. And, and it's typically read as one continuous passage, right? Well, that's because there's typically like no breaks. But I want you to look at this as actually being two separate passages. And I'm going to show you this, starting in verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. Ding, 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 that should uh, poke up your ears right there. They were given in marriage. Ding, 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 poke up your ears until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, I wanna stop there for a minute. That is a complete passage right there. There is your first group. And I say that that is the pre-tribulation harvest of the bride of Christ. Now, why is that? Why am I saying this? Well, what's interesting is that when you read verse 27, okay, so first off, they're associating verse 26, as in the days of Noah, as a, being associated with the days of the Son of Man. Okay, all right, we see that. What's interesting in verse 27 is that this is the only passage that deals with anything related to marriage, weddings, giving in marriage, marrying wives. Do you understand? Why would that be the case? Why would marriage, marrying wives, giving into marriage, why would that be important here? Because what we notice is that in the next passage, the days of Lot, there's none of that mentioned at all. Why is that? Because the marriage is what happens with the first group. The first group that is taken, the first group that is harvested, the bride of Christ, the barley harvest bride, is the bride of Christ that will be marrying the son. That will be the union, the marriage union that will happen in heaven. Okay. All right. And here's another thing I want, I want to show you this. There is this one thing. It will be as it was in the days of Noah. How was it in the days of Noah? Now, a lot of times what you will hear people discuss is the, you know, how, how it was, the world was filled with violence and, and that sort of thing. Okay. All right. Um, but what I want to focus on is the fact that out of the scripture, 
and Genesis chapter seven, I believe it's verse four. That is when God tells Noah and his family to go into the ark because he says, in yet seven days, I am going to bring the flood. Now, that's very interesting. Think about this for a minute. He actually, and this is why I've done uh, uh, previous messages on the fact that I believe that for the pre-tribulation harvest, there will be a seven-day warning. Why? Because he did it for Noah, and he says it's going to be just like that days of Noah. So why not having a seven-day warning? Uh, warning as well. Perhaps this is it, okay? And and the reason why I say that is because this, I'll just stick this in here too, because brothers and sisters, in the last four days, I've had three more, count them, three, three more rapture dreams, three of them. And it, it they, it's, oh, how do I put it? I'll tell you about them later. They're short, but they're powerful, but there's two sides to this coin because I'm able to see the beginning, the, the raptured folks, and then the left behind folks. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. It's so wonderful for the bride, but it's just, oh my goodness. We'll talk about that later, but right now let's focus on this. Now let's go and look at the second half. It says, Likewise, also, as it was. Now, I, I want you to say this. So they think, wait a minute. It means it's the same thing. We're talking about the same day or the same event. Hold on to your hats here. It does not say that. Let's continue to read. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. No marriage there. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, that is completely different. What do we have in the days of Noah? We have a flood. What do we have in the days of Lot? We have fire and brimstone, right? There's two separate things here. And what's happening here is we have a marriage and we have a, a seven-day warning. But here, in the days of Lot, we get them destroyed in the self-same day. That's the second group that is going to be raptured at the same time sudden destruction comes down, right? Which I believe that happens in the middle of the tribulation period. And that is going to be what we get, okay? Uh, uh, so this is, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stephen, right. The angels warned lot. And I should also point out that that's a completely different study. Uh, uh, lot also went to warn his, uh, brothers-in-law and, uh, or sons-in-law, excuse me. And, uh, and they just thought he was joking. Oh, can I get, but they were given the warning. They had a chance to get out. They were mocking and scoffing. Oh, so guess what? They were left behind. Amazing, right? They weren't just dragged out by themselves. Are you amazing? Uh, okay. Anyway, I, I digress. It's not a pretty sight, but we have that. All right. Now, this mid-trib harvest of the sleepy church, I believe that's what we see here. Now, we say sudden destruction comes upon them and destroyed them all. Okay. Ah, but it's interesting. It's completely different. There's going to be definitely destruction that's going to come, right? Now, uh, when Lot, okay, let me clarify something. So Lot coming out, I think, is going to be out of this passage. That is our a uh, representative of the sleepy church, okay? Now, so he's taken out, and that's what we say, as it was in the days of Lot. We know there are more people involved, right? But in this passage out of Luke, as we're showing the two different groups, we got Noah, obviously representative of one group, and we have Lot, 
representative of another group. And once both of those are taken out at their respective times, then uh, uh, then sudden destruction comes out, right? Destroys all the, the bad folks, right? Um, I find this, this very interesting. I find this very interesting. So we're going to go in. Let's go into this deeper, okay? I want, I want to show you some things about this. Okay. So what I did is I uh, just got out the entire chapter of Luke. And I want to show you this uh, first page uh, and uh, second page because I am a highlighter person, okay? So I like highlighters. So uh, I want you to uh, take a uh, let's see snapshot of this. Okay. All right. So this is, and of course I'm reading everything out of the King James Bible. So if anybody's going like, oh, look at that translation he's reading out of. Come on, guys. Look. Okay. I'm trying to give you the message here. I'm hoping you're actually going to go into whichever version you're reading. Check out the words and the meanings in them. That's part of your job, folks. Let's get in the word. All right. Now, you'll notice that on the left-hand part of the page, I have numbers. <clears throat> what do these numbers represent? Breaks in the topic, okay? So here on this first page, we have four different topics, but I have one, two, and three, which shows you three different things. And, uh, and, and what I believe is three different groupings, okay? Now, let, let me read this. So in 17, and, and I want you to get a hold of this. So he, the first group is 17 verses one through four. The second group is verses five and six. The third group is verses seven through 10. And then we'll continue on with 11 here in a moment. But I want you to see something. Then he said unto his disciples, ding, ding, ding. Let's, let's pause here for a moment and notice who is speaking or being spoken to, okay? He's Speaking, he, Jesus, is speaking to the disciples. That means the whole group. And that would be representative of the entire body. Okay, that's what I'm going to tell you. That's, that, and here's the reason why. Then he said unto the disciples, why? They, they believe in Jesus. They all do. It is impossible but that offenses will come. They're going to come, folks but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones, his children. Take heed to yourselves, verse three, if thy brother, I want you to highlight that. So we're talking about disciples and the brothers of disciples. Trespass against thee, Rebuke him. Now, I want to stop there for a second, too, because everyone talks about, well, you got to forgive, you got to forgive. Yes, we've got to forgive. Forgiveness is so very important, but so is correction. Okay? So, what does this say? This is Jesus talking. He's not just saying that under no matter what, forgive him, forgive him, forgive him. Yes, we know how to forgive. But what is this saying here? If your brother has trespassed or sinned against you personally, rebuke him. Okay, that's Jesus talking. That's not me. Okay, you've got to correct him. He made a mistake. And if he repent, forgive him. Now, ultimately, forgiveness, it comes down. Forgiveness is not for the other person. The forgiveness is for you. You understand? Don't let things just hold on to you, take you up and, and get this bitter root in you. Let go of it. Let go of it. It's not worth it. Do you understand? But this is what it's saying. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Now, 
this is not saying, I don't believe that what he is saying, I believe he's saying if somebody is actually repentant, it's not, <laughs> Jesus said, if, if I do this, I just say, repent, and you've got to forgive me. It doesn't mean that. Repentance is from the heart, okay? And so is your forgiveness, all right? All right, so let's continue on. That's one group, disciples and brothers. Disciples, that's the whole body. Now, let's look at verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord. Now, who are we talking about now? We're talking about a subgroup of the disciples. We're not talking about the whole body anymore. We're talking about a small part. Remember, there was only 12 of those, right? So the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. So what did we have in our first topic? We had forgiveness. What is our second topic? Faith, right? And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you, okay? Then he switches, he being Jesus, switches, and now we get into a third group. But which of you, having a servant, ah, now we've got servants, and if you look, what I've got there, we got servant, and then in verse 9, servant, and then we've got verse 10, servants. It's kind of important, folks, okay? So this is a group of servants, and they're different. But which of you, having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he has come from the field, go in, sit down to meet. And will not rather say unto him, the servant, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he think that servant, because he did the things that were commanded him, uh, does he thank that servant? I troth not. So, no, don't think so. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Okay? Now, I, I, I want you to see this. I, I want you to get a handle on this. Woo! -hoo. Sorry, folks. Come on. Come in. What happened to the light? There we go. Sorry, folks. All right. So it is our duty to do. So here we're talking about servants of the Lord. Who are the unprofitable servants? That rings back to one of his parables. And we know all about what happens to unprofitable servants, don't we? Okay. All right. So I would say that that could be representative of the Jews, right? So we have the apostles. So we have the small group, the harvest, the barley harvest represented by the apostles. Then we have the wheat harvest represented by the disciples and the brothers. That's the body. And then we have these other servants, uh, other group, which is the servants, right? <clears throat> and what's really important about this is he says, which of you? So he's talking to apostles and disciples, right? Having a servant. So in other words, he's not saying that the disciples and the apostles are servants. He's saying, which of you having a servant would say to that? So it's talking about a different group. Are you following me? All right. <clears throat> so we see what I see out of this are the three groups. Now let's continue on in verse 11. And it came to pass as he, Jesus, went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Now what, I stop right here and this is what I want you to see. Wait a minute. He was headed to Jerusalem and he passed through Samaria and Galilee. And what I see out of this is the you know, Gentiles and Jews, the connected ones, that I see this as representative of both Gentiles and Jews, Samaria and Galilee, okay? All right. And as he entered into a certain village, he's not saying which village, it's just a village, right? 
because the important point are the names of those that he was passing through. There he met 10 men that were lepers. Now, if we can assume for a moment, just for the sake of argument here, that Samaria and Galilee actually can, is the entire group of Gentiles and Jews, then who are these lepers? The number 10 in the Bible <clears throat> is used for a couple of things, divine order, completeness, that sort of thing. So we have 10 men. So it's the complete number of people. They were lepers. They were all unclean. Now, what's very interesting when you look at that, so they, they all had to stand. If someone had leprosy during those days, they could not be around anybody else under penalty of death. If they wanted to, they had to stay away, afar off. And if somebody that didn't have leprosy came near, they had to holler out, unclean, unclean, so that the other people would know and they would stay away from them. They were isolated. It was, it was just horrible for them, right? All right. So they were unclean. Who's unclean in this world? We're all unclean, folks. We're all unclean. This is all of us. There's only one person who can cleanse us. Praise God. That's Jesus. He can cleanse you. He has the most awesome cleansing blood. And let's see. Oh, praise you. Praise you, Lord. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, on us. And this once again tells me that we are dealing with a complete group of Gentiles and Jews that believe in Jesus. Why? Because these perfect 10 unclean folks are calling Jesus master. Okay? All right. So let's go on. What is he, what else do they say? Have mercy on us. Isn't that what we all say, brothers and sisters? We all had to call out to Jesus to have mercy on us. Amen. All right. And when he saw them, wow, it, it just didn't mean that he just happened to glance over. When Jesus sees you, he sees all of you. He sees the very core of you. Do you understand this? Uh, wow. Uh, uh, okay, you've got, can't read that paper with blurred out areas. Oh, you'll have to tell me uh, if anybody is uh, needing me to show that again, I'll show you again. All right, <clears throat> verse 14, and when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now, there was one of the things that was what Moses said that they had to do. If a leper was cleansed, then what was required under the law is that they had to present themselves with a certain offering, sacrifice, excuse me, and present themselves to the priest. And so that's what he's doing here. He's telling them, do what the law requires of you. Now, what, is, what I find very interesting, though, is that in the law, the way that it's written, if I understand this correctly, if you are already cleansed, you show yourself to the priest, right? All right. Now, let's look at what this says now. They are in faith. They are obeying what Jesus is telling them to do, and they are heading towards the priest. Okay, let's go show ourselves to the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. They haven't gotten there yet, okay? They're on their way. They were cleansed on their way to the priest, right? All right. Now, this is what gets very interesting. Verse 15, and one of them, one of the 10, a portion, a part, a body part, right? One of them, when he saw that he was healed, 
turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feast, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. All right. Now, why, why would like Jesus just kind of throw that in there, right? This is very interesting. If you go back to what I was saying, and we understand that Samaria was representative of the Gentiles, and we see that everyone was sent to the priest. He's the one who came giving glory to God. He didn't go to do what the rest of the ones who felt that they had to do under the law. He stopped and he came back glorifying God, understanding that Jesus had healed him, okay? And uh, let's see, can't read the paper with the blurred out areas. Okay, just tell me which one it is, folks. All right, and uh, let's see. And Jesus answering said in verse 17, were there not 10 cleansed? In other words, weren't all of them cleansed? But where are the nine? Well, interestingly, so there are nine. They continue on to the priest, right? That's what they were told to do. So they are obeying, but nine is representative of judgment. That's interesting that we have that showing up there. Uh, one comes to Jesus. If he comes to Jesus, the other walk away, and they are going to be left they are left behind, right? Okay, they're going into judgment. All right. Uh, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Okay. I think that's an encapsulation of the whole process, right? Okay. All right. So then we go from verse 19 into verse 20, and we have another change. This is very interesting, and this gets to the, the thesis of what I've been saying, okay? <clears throat> I, I will tell you the dreams. Hold on, folks. 